carnival training. I am recording safely from a basement studio, so I won't need this mask. But I hope I see you around town and recognize your twinkling, smiling eyes behind your mask. Anyway, this exercise video, Chair Interval Training, is brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs and the Yellow Springs Senior Center. I hope you've been enjoying it. You could catch it on Channel 5 on Spectrum Cable, that's our Community Access channel, or on the YouTube channel. Uh, just search Community Access Yellow Springs on YouTube and you can watch it anytime you want. Let's get started with a gentle warm up because it's time. Even though it's hot outside, we still need to warm up. All we're going to need is a sturdy chair, some water, very important when the temperatures get high, and a rubber ball and a rubber tubing or a band. If you don't have the materials, a chair and your body will do. I'm going to get started standing up, but you are encouraged to stay in your chair should you need to. Because you should consult your doctor about this or any exercise program. And if you feel dizzy or wobbly or like something's just not right for you, you are right. You're the expert on you. So if any of those conditions occur, you're encouraged to stay in your chair or return to your chair during this exercise program. All right, I'm counting on you. I wish I could talk to you and you could talk back, but that day will come. Let's get some music going. That makes it a little bit easier to move and for me to keep on time. Because time is really important, isn't it? It's one of our most valuable resources. Ah, so it's time to just march it out. Use your best posture. Ears over, shoulders over hips. And breathe. As you breathe, do your best to breathe in through your nose. If your nose is stopped up, your mouth works well too, but it's better practice to nose breathe. If one can. At least for that inhale. More on that at the end of the show, but we're going to work on the ABCs. A is for agility, B is for balance, C is for coordination, and S is for strength. We get to work on our cardiovascular training as well, as, and we also get a nice stretch and relaxation. But agility, balance, and coordination are included in every segment because we know those things, when we practice them, will reduce our risk of falls. That's a good thing. Let's just widen out our stance and step tap a bit. Pull the shoulder up closer to your ear. See how that feels to roll. Ah. Feels good to move. We're going to use a perceived exertion scale from 1 to 10. One being the least intense exercise, practically falling asleep in your chair. And 10 being the most intense, maximal intensity exercise. Unable to talk, having trouble breathing. That's not desirable. So we're shooting for a four to a seven on that perceived exertion scale. A four would be, I feel great, I can tell I'm exercising. And a seven would be like, oof, I'm starting to get a little sweaty. It's okay if you get to an eight sometimes, but you really gotta slow down if you feel like a nine or a 10, or stop. Another way we can gauge proper intensity while we're exercising is if we can talk. So just a couple words, and that means you've got a little extra oxygen you're not over -inverted. Great. 
Okay, just march it out. We're going to use a couple patterns that I want to preview. So when we get to it, you can master those patterns. If you come on over to the right side of your chair, we're going to pretend that our right foot is stepping on different numbers of a clock. I'm going to call it clockwork. So just get marching on your right foot. Right, 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 left, right. Make sure your area is free and clear of anything you might slip, trip, or fall on. Tuck everything under your chair or keep it out of your way. You might also need to have one hand on that balance check chair at all times. If you're right there, you can grab it if you need it. All right, we're going to take that right foot and we're going to step on each number of the clock. We're going to step on 12, step on 1, step on 2, step on 3, 4, 5, 6, and back to the 5, back around, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 12. Get it? When we're on the other side, we'll be going back in time. Wouldn't that be nice? Huh. All right. The time keeps on ticking. And it's time for us to just transition to the chair easily if you're not already there. Taking your time, getting your heels and lower legs lined up with the front legs of your chair. So you can sit down nice and slow, which is a great strength exercise. We do squat in this exercise class, don't we? How many times you do that is up to you, but just get seated. And remember, when you're in your chair, that's the best time to get a sip of water. If you're thirsty now or any time you're in your chair, best practice is to step to the side, engage your core, lean to the side, support your core with your arm. And that lateral flexion with support is much kinder, gentler to your back. Ooh, it's hot outside. All right, sitting at the edge of your chair, let's do a little dynamic seated exercise and continue to warm up and add some stretches. Are you ready? Sit tall and stretch out your right leg. Stretch out your left leg. Good. If it feels good, show me the sole of your shoe. I do recommend working out in good sturdy shoes designed for the activity. And it's not just me. Your doctor would recommend it also. Particularly if you are diabetic, you want to need to protect your feet and have them checked regularly. All right, we're stretching out. If anything doesn't feel good, you can put that heel back down on the ground. But it's time to move those ankles with a flex point flex. Time to move the wrists also. Sit tall. Sometimes I forget and I start to slump. But I get taller and I hope you are too when I try to imagine a string pulling my head up like a marionette. Good. All right, that's enough of that. Let's stretch out the, the right leg. Support the back, keeping it long and strong. Breathing in and hinging halfway forward to that lap. Not too much, please. Lift your toes and lift your fingers too. Ah, and then push the palm and the sole of the foot down. Good, pull the navel in and draw your knee towards your chest, drawing little circles with your foot. One direction and then the other. Ah, let's stretch out that left leg. Support the spine again. Inhale from the bottom to the top of your spine. 
exhale, and lift your fingers, lift your toes, feel that stretch on the back of the calf, knee, and thigh. You should feel it, but it shouldn't ever hurt. If you ever have sharp, sudden shooting pain, stop. You can always go back to the last movement that felt good to you, or you can substitute another movement. Rolling that ankle one direction, and then the other. You know, you can even substitute nothing, otherwise known as rest. It's okay to do your best and then take a rest. Okay. Let's see. Let's practice breathing because nothing's so easy that we can't get better at it. As you inhale, open your palms back, open your chest, lift your heart, and as you exhale, close your palms, your chest, your shoulders. Maybe push and pull your navel in so that your spine arches like a C, the letter C. Very good. Okay. All right, we're going to use that scale of 1 to 10 to assess our intensity. And I'm also going to ask you to assess your posture and your balance. And if you feel like it's just not right for you today, trust your body, trust yourself. You know you. So we're going to do uh, our first interval of close to 10 minutes of balance and aerobic activity. And it's not our clockwork pattern, it's another pattern. So I'm going to show you in the chair, but if you know you want to stand, you're welcome to stand. It's called two and two. We've done it once before. But you'll take two steps, little ones, over to the right, and then you'll lift your knee twice. Then you'll take two steps, little ones, to the left, and then you'll lift your knee. Good. And we can do that slow and lift twice. Or we can do it a little faster. Over, two, up, two. Over, two, up, two. Get it? Okay. I'm going to stand up. If you want to keep moving in your seat or on your feet, just keep moving. I'm going to come behind my chair, so I can use it as my balance check. You're encouraged to move as lively as you like, but please make sure you've got a clear path, because we're kind of going to be going sliding right and left, so you don't want to catch your toe on the chair. Keep it where you can see it in your peripheral vision, and touch it, should you need it. Let's take two slow steps to, to the right, and lift that right knee, two, one. And then two slow steps to the left. Good, two left knees. A little bit faster. Two to the right and two right knees. Two to the left, two left knees. Get it? Good. So this takes a little coordination as well. Now, you've got one hand near your chair at all times so that you can touch it if you need that balance check. But you can also put your toe down if you need. Pull your navel in, and this becomes a little bit of an abdominal exercise. Two steps. Going at this pace, you could also get down into a little mini squat, if you like. Are your thighs getting sore? If you're in the chair, probably they're tiring out. So we could do a different movement here. We could do a hip or a hamstring curl, sorry. Sort of like keeping your foot dorsiflexed. It feels like playing hopscotch when you were a kid. Or maybe even now. That Good, so hamstring curls, working different muscle groups. Over and up. Over and 
up. Remember, you can get down a little in between. If you like. Or you can keep it really small. And just work on that balance. We're getting some good, gentle, low-impact aerobic activity at our own pace with this pattern. Good. Well, if we straighten out our leg while we do these hamstring curls out to the side, we can try hip abduction. Out to the side. Keep your body tall. Two steps right, lift. Lift. Two steps left. This is a little trickier than it might look. Because it's, it's kind of a new pattern. Do your best and then you can rest when you need. You can march it out. Or make it little. Or big. Good. Our hips are getting strong with this one. Hey, let's change it up because my hips are getting tired. I don't want yours to. Let's try little toe raises here. Up, up, to the left, up, up. Kind of like shooting a basketball or jumping rope, but you don't have to jump. Two to the right, up, up. How are you feeling on our perceived exertion scale? I'm feeling good. I definitely got to a four. Are you above a seven? I hope not. If so, you can just sort of make it smaller. Arms overhead uses more energy. You could also, if you wanted more, you could use both hands. And you can swap in between. There's a lot of room for the pace that is right for you. Do your best and rest when you need to and join back in when you can. We've been doing twos and twos. Let's take a little break. Just march it out. Think about this one. We're going to do it in fours, so your steps will have to be a little smaller. We'll take four to the right, and then four lifts, so we'll be balancing twice as long. And then four steps to the left, and four lifts. So going back to the beginning, we used slow steps. Start over on the left, and take little steps slow. Three more. Two more. You can still touch your chair. Now four knee lifts. Four. Three. Two. This is hard balance work. One. Four slow steps to the left. Three more. Two more. Make sure you still touch your chair. Four knee lifts. Left. Left. We're doing it slow. Two more. Let's do it a little bit faster. Four steps to the right. Still touching the chair. Four knees. Got your chair if you need it. Four steps to the left. Four knees. That's a little bit longer for balancing, isn't it? You can always touch your chair or touch your toe down. Do your best. Four, three, two, one. Don't go so far that you can't reach your chair. Okay, that's our safety zone. We'll do one more set with knees. And then we'll try it with our hamstring curls. If you want. Here we go. Over. Now kick your butt. Two more. Here we go. Four. Three. Two. Woo. Four to the left. Got it? Four butt kickers. Can I see that on TV? Four. Three. Two. Four. Three. Two. Other way. Woo. It's getting hot. We're almost there. Let's try this with hip abduction. So straight out to the side, right hip. Lift the head up, pull the navel in. We got this. Together we can do it. <laughs> Four on the left. 
Ooh, that's hard. Let's try another set on each side. Up, 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 up. Good. This is the last set with hip abduction. We'll do another set with toe raises. Are you with me? Up on those tippy toes. Strengthen your calves. Strengthen your heart. You can push with one arm or both. It's up to you. Or actually, you can push with none. Right? You can just keep your hands down. But again, when we raise our hands up, if it doesn't hurt, it adds to the cardio output. How hard your heart is working. And you get to decide how hard you want to work. One more. Four. Three. Two. Tippy toes. Four. Three. Let's see if we can stand on one. And balance. Ooh, come on down. Walk your left foot back. Get a little stretch on that left calf. They were working hard. We will lengthen them after we've shortened them and strengthened them. If you're seated, you can just draw one heel back closer to the underside of your chair seat. It's a little hard to get a calf stretch in the chair though. Alright, oof. Wow. Trying to switch the focus of our exercise to one of strength. And your best body weight strength exercise is you know what? Do your best, keeping your weight equal in your right and your left feet. Inhale through your nose. Keep up your eyes smiling and point across the wall. Now help correct your posture. Tailbone goes back. And as you come up, you can put a little power by squeezing the hips forward, driving them forward to take a load off of your knees. <sighs> Ooh, good time to step to the side, lean to the side, support your back. Support all your body systems with some good water. I know a lot of people don't really relish drinking water all by itself, plain water. I don't like it. I find it very crunchy. But um, there are plenty of things that you could use. We're going to use our... Um, band here. You can use also a rubber band or a tube. But we're going to do a couple of serious strength sets. So anyway, some of the products that you can put in your water that might make it tasty are good old slices of lemon or citrus fruits or these emergency packets. I know Tom's Market sells them and they give you a high dose of vitamin C. And we don't know everything about the corona, the novel coronavirus, COVID-19, but we do know that having a good nutritional balance and having some vitamin C and vitamin D seem to be helpful. Um, at least they haven't found any people who have died that have high levels of vitamin C or vitamin D. They usually have low. So it doesn't hurt to have an adequate amount, but again, consult your doctor about that or your registered dietitian. We have some good ones right here in town. Meanwhile, grab your hand, bow, shoulder width apart. Ah. Sit tall. Well, you know what? Not at the edge of your seat, well back into your seat with your heels close to the chair legs. So, Reach for the, where the ceiling meets the wall and pull that tube apart, lat pull downs. We do this often because it's a great compound upper body exercise. Keep the wrist straight. Inhale, exhale, don't hold your breath, repeat. If you want to add a squat, your hips are down while your hands are up. Your hips are up while your hands are down. Do your best. It doesn't take very long if you've got a good bit of resistance on your tube and you're imagining pulling your body up like 
Well, we played hopscotch earlier. When you were a child, did you hang out in the um, on the playground and hang from the the climbing, the jungle gym, or the playground equipment, or climb trees? That's what it feels like to me. I feel like about an eight on that one to eight scale. Sometimes towards the end of a strength set, you might feel like your muscles are a little quivery. That's okay. Or a little sore, but not sharp, sudden shooting, stabbing pain. That needs to stop. Okay, we're gonna do another exercise, but um, for this one, we're gonna put this band behind our back. Scooch back into the chair. No squats with this one. As we do this chest press, it feels pretty easy. If you want to make it more challenging, you can grab the tube a little closer to your shoulder. Sit tall. Exhale as you straighten your arms. Inhale. Squeeze your elbows back. Bending your elbows while you do this, rather than doing it straight, is great. You know why? Compound exercises that move more than one joint use more muscles. That's a good thing. And when we bend and straighten our elbow, we're exercising and strengthening the triceps, the back of your upper arm. If you straighten your leg and reach for the toes and stretch the crown of your head up, you're doing a leg extension and that will strengthen your quadriceps. Pull the navel in. We're using our abdominals a little with this too. Can you feel it? I can. And I feel like I'm getting close to momentary muscular fatigue. When you feel like you cannot do another repetition in good form, it's time to stop. And you have achieved success. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do another pull a uh, pulling exercise, but this one's going to be palms up. Palms up, horizontal pull. Keep a soft bend in your elbow and situate your hips well back in your chair with your heels near the front legs should you choose to add a squat. Roll those shoulders down and back in their back pockets and like you're hitchhiking, Lead with your thumb, palms up or just slightly tilted in if it hurts your elbow or your shoulder at all. You can bend the elbow more. Now, if you want to add a squat, your hips are back while your hands are forward and together. Your hips are up and forward while your hands are out. Stretch the hips back, keep the eyes on a target across the room. And that will help correct your posture. Keep your heels digging in. As they say, dig those heels in. Do your best. You can inhale or exhale during either phase of this strength exercise. But don't hold your breath. You really need that oxygen. Even though this is an anaerobic activity, all your body systems need that oxygen. Woo! I have about reached the target of momentary muscular fatigue. How about you? I felt like about an eight or a nine at times with the strength exercise. And that's okay, but not ever with sharp pain. Good time to get a sip of water. I hope you have a safe, cool home. Um, there are probably cooling stations when, when a heat wave occurs. But if you're concerned about that, you know, I would call the, the non-emergency village uh, number. I think it's 937-767-7206. Or, um, you know, they might have some ideas of how you could 
cool off if your home doesn't have air conditioning um, or your power's cut off and you do have air conditioning. Um, just hydrate, stay out of the sun, and uh, be smart, be safe. All right, it's time to change the focus back to one of heart pumping, no jumping, aerobic delight. Or at least I hope it's a little bit fun. Here is our clock pattern. I'm going to show you in the chair, but if you know you want to do it um, on your feet, you're welcome to get on your feet. And we'll be over on the right side. If you're seated, come to the very edge of your seat. Sit tall or stand tall. Stay where you can touch your chair. And we're going to march with that right foot, right foot, marching, marching. You got it. And then we're going to just Go around the clock, like clockwork, with that right foot touching the number 12. 12, and back. Now one, and back. Now two, get it? Now three, good. Now four, good. And five, and six, and then back around to five, four, three, you're in a little mini squat, two, one, and we're straight up at 12 again. Did you get that? We're going to play around with that pattern for agility. So keep arching, whether you're on your chair or on the air. We're going to stay on the right if you're seated. And your thighs get a little tired, heavy, achy. Just take a rest or draw your heels back. All right, so if you're standing, right foot, right foot. Let's go around that clock again. 12, one, at tempo, two, at three, good, four. So your right foot is touching all of the numbers. Get to six, and then we're gonna go back to five. Four, three, but we gotta work on agility. Two, one, we're gonna do it faster, ready, 12. One, two, three, stand tall, four, five, six, five, four, three, two, one, go around that clock again, one, two, three, four, five, six, five, four, three, two, one, and just march it out. Take a nice deep breath, how you doing? Breathe, stand or sit tall. I hope you got that pattern. We're going to work a little bit differently now. Same pattern, and then we'll do the other side. So that's the roadmap. But now we were stepping. Now it's time to tap. Make sure you can hold your chair and just tap 12. Tap 1. Tap 2. We're hinging down into that left leg. Tap 4. Tap 5. Reach back. Tap 6. And then come on back again. We're doing a little one-legged squat here. Tap two. We're going to do this faster. One. You ready? Faster. Twelve. One. Two. Three. We're tapping. Four. Five. Six. Back around. Four. Three. Two. One. Wow! Did you feel that on your standing leg? Ooh, I did. If you need to sit down, that's not failure, that's success. But we're going to keep moving, keep that heart pumping, because we know our heart and lungs need to be strengthened. Make sure you've got a safe area over here on the left side of your chair or in your chair. Best posture, get that left foot marching. Left, 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 right, left. Can you see and touch that chair? Safety first. Okay, this is kind of weird because we're going to go back around in time. We'll be going counterclockwise now. So we'll go from 12 to 11 to 10. Are you with me? Here we go. 12, 11, together, 10, 9. Ready? 8, 7. When we get to 6, we're going to come back around. Good. To 7. Eight, this is our clock for nine. We're going slow, 10, 11. Let's do it faster, 12, 11, 10, 
nine, eight, seven, six, back around, seven, eight, nine, ten, this is a brain stretch, eleven, twelve, back around again, or nine, and six, seven, I forgot how to count, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, just march it out, Woo. How are you doing on our scale of 1, not to 12, but 10? So many numbers. Can you, can you holler out a few in a row? Pass the talk test? You better be able to. Otherwise, you're working too hard. Okay, we're going to take it from a step to a slow tap. Best posture, balance, and just tap 12 with your left foot. Tap. Now, 11. 10, 9, got our chair if we need it, 8, this is hard work as we hinge down into that right leg, back at 6 and back around, 7, 8, 9, 10, we're going slow, 11, let's speed it up with our taps, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, back around, last one, this is harder than it looks, for me, but how did you do? Oh, my legs are starting to feel like jelly. <laughs> I think that means it's time to transition again to one of strength. Well, we got a couple more minutes of aerobic activity. Let's try our clockwork one more time. We're gonna step it out, but we're not rock back to the center of our clock. So this time, we're going to step on 12, step on 11, step on 10, step on 9. You got it? Wait, that was over there. Correction. We're going to step on 12, step on 1, step on 2, step on 3, step on 4, step on 5, step on 6, and back around. Hmm. At this tempo, then we'll slow it down. Let's get on the good foot. Everybody march on the right, right, right. Let's step on 12. Step. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Back around five, four, three, two, one. Slow. One, two, three. We're in our squat. Four. This is serious leg work. Five. Six, back around, five, how are you doing? Four, three in our squat, two, one. Ooh, that was hard for me. If you're done with this exercise, go ahead and have a seat, get a sip of water. We're gonna finish it off with that step clockwork. It's actually a matrix lunge. Ooh. Make sure your area is safe. You can touch your chair. Get your left foot going. March, march. Left, left. Step on 12. Step 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Back around to 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Slow it down. And 11. You got your chair if you need it. 10, 9. We're in our squat. Eight, seven, this is aerobic for me. Six, it depends on how low you can go. Don't do it with any pain. You can just do it with an easy step or you can go low as you feel confident and safe. That was a bit of work, wasn't it? My legs are all wobbly. Good news, we're gonna transition to strength and it's not gonna be so much legs, it's gonna be core because we just did a lot with our legs. But, we did not get the back of our butt. So it's time to squat. Here we go. Hinge those hips back, keep your head up. Don't let your knees knock. Get seated when you're ready or power up. Let's go down on a three slow count. Down, two, three, power up. Down, two, three, it's time to power up. Two more, let's say. Last one, go down real slow and just stay down. 
If you're not already there, sit down. Woo! Take a break. Please get a sip of water. Oh. Good old water. Okay, we're going to do some work with our ball. Really important, especially when we're using the ball for any isometric or very short ranges of motion where we're tightening muscles, that we breathe properly. So think of every time that we squeeze a muscle or we squeeze the ball. Think of squeezing the air out. That's a good time to exhale. All right. Coming to the edge of our chair. Let's put our feet just ever so slightly ahead of our knees. We can use grip strength with this, but if it hurts your thumb joint, you can grab the ball with your four fingers and leave a thumb out of the equation. If it doesn't hurt your thumbs, you can squeeze with all of your digits, but open it back up to get a little rest in between on a stretch. Grip strength is highly correlated with independent living. Core strength is really key for our balance. Tuck your tailbone under, sitting at the edge of your seat. Lean back. See if you can tap your shoulder blades lightly on the chair and then slide forward just an inch or two. Because we want to use gravity against these muscles to strengthen them. And our body weight is the, is the weight, it's weight training. Now, if you like, you can add a little grip strength to that, squeezing and or lifting your knee. Keep your chin tucked a little bit for best neck or cervical vertebrae health and comfort. If it hurts, don't do it. You can leave your back in the seat back and just do the knee ups. You can make it bigger. If your grip strength is wearing low, wearing thin, but your core still needs a challenge, try this. Try a little pec squeeze. Squeeze that ball between your elbows, and that will get a nice finish off to this abdominal exercise with some chest strengthening too. Do your best. And when you're done, take a rest. Ooh, I felt that here and here and here. So we can inhale and open our spine to its tallest, even arching a wee bit just to lengthen those muscles. Good, all right. We're gonna do another little bit of a core exercise, but we're gonna use the upper back and our elbow again with a slightly sideways turn. Um, place that ball on your right thigh, support it with your left arm, and place your right elbow or forearm on it. And then, like you're chopping wood, I want you to push that right arm, and, and you can use the left arm, into that right leg. Holding the navel in as you do so. Breathe as you squeeze the air out of the ball. You can experiment further away from your hips or closer. I like to cross my arms a little bit so the ball doesn't shoot out. We're using our shoulder stabilizers. And if you are pushing hard, you can really feel this in your rectus abdominis, the six pack, and your core muscles on your back, your quadratus lumborum, and on your side, the obliques. Good. Well, we've got to get that other side then, don't we? Well, let's take a little break. Play a little game with our ball. This is called VOR, or vestibulo-ocular 
reflex. When you were a kid and you spun around until you got dizzy and uh, fell down, you were actually trying to suppress the VOR, or vestibular ocular reflex. And top ballet dancers and other dancers spot a point on the wall to suppress that. And their brain eventually gets used to it so they're not dizzy and they don't lose their balance. We're going to do a very safe version of that. So our arms will probably get tired of this, so you can hold the ball out about an arm's length away from your body and switch it if it gets tired. But I want you to keep your eyes focused on the center of the ball, but don't move your head, okay? And as you move the ball, kind of like a clock hand to the right, and a clock, you know, back and forth, or like the clapper of a grandfather clock. Track the ball with your eyes, but do not move your head. If your hand gets tired, use, or your arm gets tired, use the other one. Stretch your eyes as far as you can go. Maybe make it smaller and do little eye jumps. Don't move your head. My head started moving. You can do that with a chart. Maybe some of you have gotten my VOR chart. And you can practice it at the level of progression that challenges you best safely. So maybe next week I'll show you that chart and show you how to do that. I didn't bring it today. But we're ready to go to this other side. Finish off this strength set for our core. But we are using our shoulder stabilizers. So put that left leg out there. Stabilize it with your right arm as you Put your left elbow or, or upper arm there, or forearm, experiment. And then, once you've got it in a place, squish it. Kind of like you're chomping, if you had an ax, you'd be chomping wood, or hoeing some particularly pernicious weeds in your garden. I'll tell you, the weeds, really liked that bit of uh, rain we had. <laughs> Pull the navel in as you cross chop. It's a diagonal movement. There's not a lot of movement, so breathe as you squeeze the air out of the ball. Pull the navel in and think about how your core muscles are being strengthened, and you'll get more out of it. Do your best, maybe four more. Pull that navel in. Excellent. Oof. Okay. We can tuck that ball away. Get another sip of water. How are you doing on our perceived exertion scale? When we're doing the strength work, it's okay if you feel like a three or a four, but you won't get much out of it if you do a one or a two. You will get flexibility just from moving without the resistance, and that's a very good thing. Here's to staying flexible, and in no other part of the body more so than in the mind. Let me check our clock situation here. Feel free to have a sip of water. Oh, here we go. Okay, we're doing good. We have a little time to work on some standing, but very gentle, slow balance work. And this one will encourage the vestibular system taking the ocular system out. So eyes are very dominant to our balance equation. Inner ear can be enhanced by taking your eyes out of the equation. But that could be dangerous. So let's set ourselves up for success. If you can stand, I want you to stand directly behind your chair or you use both hands on it. I, however, I'm going to fudge over to the side of it. So you can see what I'm doing with my feet. We're going to start with a 
wide stance, and that's the widest, most stable base. You've got to have your hand a millimeter from the chair, or both hands, because you're behind it. Best posture, you have to keep your hand right next to the chair, because we're going to close our eyes. And with our eyes closed, if we feel wobbly, we can open them, and immediately our balance will improve. With our eyes closed, if we feel wobbly, we can open our eyes or grab the chair. And those are two safety nets, but here's a third safety net that we already practiced. It's called clockwork or stepping up. So eyes closed, we can open our eyes, that's safety net one. We can grab our chair, that's number two. And the third is stepping out. And that wide or lower base is an ex excellent skill to prevent falls. It strengthens your legs, it gets you lower to the ground and more stable. So, if you want to make it harder, directly behind your chair, bring your feet to a neutral stance. Best posture, hand right on that chair. See how it feels now to close your eyes. You can open your eyes, grab your chair, or step out when you need a balance check. Now, if you're ready to progress, some of you are already feeling like that's a good balance practice right there. If you want a more of a challenge, feet narrow stance or right smack dab together. Best posture hand where? Where you can touch the chair in a millisecond. So then you can close your eyes and now you're, maybe you're feeling more challenged. I am. So you can open your eyes, touch the chair, or step out whenever you like. What would be more challenging? A tandem or staggered stance. And this is where it gets really hard. So I encourage you to make sure when your eyes are open that you can step out either direction with your eyes open. And make sure you can touch your chair. Your hands are not supposed to be up here because they're not gonna, there's no sky bars to help you check your balance. Keep it right there, okay? Now this is feeling okay, you feel safe, you can close your eyes, knowing you can open them in a heartbeat. Actually less, knowing you can grab your chair in a millisecond. Knowing you can step out. That's a hard balance practice. And then, you could do it with the other foot in front because it's going to be a little different with right in front, left in front. So this is a great way to strengthen your vestibular or inner ear. Ooh, I need to step out. I've been practicing. I'm keeping my hand close to the chair and I know you are too. And then the top level of this balance progression would be standing on one foot. That's really hard and it's not in everybody's repertoire, but you can try it. If you set yourself up for success, hand a millimeter from the chair. Nothing that's going to cause you to slip, trip, or fall. And of course, if you do it on one leg and it doesn't hurt, you can try it on the other. That's hard. But if it doesn't challenge us, it doesn't change us. So we're going to sit a stretch. It is time to slow down. I'm going to clear the path here. Do one last slow hip strengthening squat. One last opportunity to get a sip of water if you like. Let's see. I'm going to tuck that in right. Okay. And we're going to slow it down. Well, first, let's slow our breath rate and our heart rate with some, just a couple of deep breaths. Be mindful of the length of our spine. Try your best to breathe in through your nose. You can just rest your shoulders and think 
of smelling a beautiful aroma. And then exhale as if you're blowing through an imaginary little tiny straw. But it should be effortless. We'll practice more breathing later, but I want you to just slow your heart rate a bit. And we're going to start with this sideways facing stretch. So if your left hip is just off of the front edge of your chair, you can support your spine or think of reaching forward for something as you get that left leg, coax it back little by little, slow. You can let the toe gently point back towards the wall behind you, or you can tuck it under. Either way, relax the, the foot. Let that leg feel heavy and drift down. And then fill your lungs and let your, the crown of your head drift up. You can open your spine if it feels fine. Laterally flex towards your chair. Come out of that nice and easy. We'll get the other side. But let's get a little cow cat or spine open, close, deep breathing in between. So inhale as you peel your fingers back. Looks like a butterfly. Keep breathing. Open your chest and your spine a bit. You can lift your gaze, but not too much. We don't want you to hurt your neck. And then exhale as you close your spine, your shoulders, your chest. Push out all the stale air. Curling your spine. Take your time as we turn to the left side. So now the right hip is a little bit off of the front edge of the chair. You can hold on. Support your spine as you hinge forward to help ease slowly that right leg back to your full, safe, comfortable range of motion. This is a good hip flexor or left psoas and quadriceps stretch. Let that right knee drift down. And let the crown of your head drift up. Breathing as you reach for the sky. Opening your spine if it feels fine today. If it hurts, don't do it. Exhale. Leaning towards your chair back. Breathe deep. Let the stretch develop as you fill your lungs like you're smelling a beautiful flower. And then exhale as if you're blowing dandelion fluff. Oh, that felt good. All right. So it's time for us to sit back and just take a few moments to breathe and be mindful and when I say mindful, we're really trying our best to get out of our mind and focus on the heart or the lungs. And this is a good exercise. So scooch back, get comfy, sit however you like. Letting your shoulders relax down away from your earlobes to get the tension out of your neck and shoulders is good. Resting the weight of your arms on your lap and just feeling or sensing the fingertips touch each other. Lowering your gaze or closing your eyes will help you to relax as you breathe in gently, effortlessly at your own pace. Ideally through your nose. at your own pace as if you're blowing effortlessly through a little tiny straw or whatever imagery works for you but 
Bring your full attention to your lungs. Fill them with that wave of fresh energizing oxygen from the bottom to the top. And as you exhale, that wave of unneeded breath goes from the top to the bottom. Letting go of what you don't need. Breathe at your own pace. Perhaps take three to four more deep energizing, relaxing breaths. And if you like, you can count your inhale at a steady rhythm, and you can count your exhale. session today, you can open your eyes or you could leave them shut. I wanted to take a moment to talk to you about a very timely matter, racism. We've got to do something. It is time. And I hope you do something too. And whatever your small step is, keep it safe, keep it simple, but it's time we do something about it, right? Uh, too many people have died, too many people are suffering, and we can all do our best. Until the next time, keep it safe and simple. Bye.